Now, Jesus, we thank you for your presence. Father, we love you. We set none above you. Touch somebody on the shoulder and say, oops. You're going to get it today. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I want to talk to us this morning about something that I believe God put in my heart. Anybody ever heard of Easter? You know, Easter is really a, a pagan holiday. What happened in the Bible is, instead of writing the word Passover, the, the writer wrote the word Easter. So all the pagans thought Christians celebrated Easter because the word Easter was there instead of Passover. So it gets a little confusion to some people where they think we celebrate Easter. We don't celebrate Easter. We celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And God gave me an interesting uh, message to bring forth this morning. And it's going to be kind of hard to, to really grab a hold of, but I would say, so I'm going to get it. No, that was you. I was saying, say, I'm going to get it. The Bible talks about marks, you know, and seals. When in the Old Testament, like if a man was a slave, you know, he would get a mark. They would put a hole in his ear and put a string through it. That would be a mark signifying that he is owned by another man. That's why women wear earrings. It's not because they wear it because it's fashionable, even though they made it fashionable, but earrings was a sign of ownership. And But I want to talk to you, well, talk to us about the mark. In the New Testament, you know, in the book of Revelation, people get nervous. You ever heard of the term mark of the beast? Yeah. And in the book of Revelation, they talk about you have to get a mark in order to get food and, and different things. But see, the Satan, the devil, is a copycat. Yeah. He only does what he's seen God do that was successful. So in the Old Testament, in the book of Ezekiel, we're not going to go there for, for the saving of time. People were bad. Somebody say bad. bad. They were really bad. And so God spoke, you know, through an angel to a priest. He said, go and mark the people that serve me. He said, put a mark in their forehead. And then he said, I want you guys that can destroy to come behind them. And everyone you see without a mark, destroy. And that mark was called a seal. Somebody say seal. You know, some cultures, they, they even put things on their foreheads. You know, even sometimes when people get married, they put things on their forehead. The high priest Aaron was instructed to wear a miter on his forehead. And it said, holiness unto the Lord as a reminder. And so I want to look at the word seal. You know, it is something that signifies that this thing belongs to someone. You ever, has anybody ever mailed a letter? If you mail a letter and it's open, anybody will go in it. But if you seal it, people know it's against the law to go in it. So when we're dealing with seals, we're dealing with uh, an authority. Somebody say an authority. So when you're looking at what happened, you know, in the Bible, Jesus, when he was, you know, when they crucified him, they put a crown of thorns around his head. You know, signifying that he not, you know, that they thought they were mocking him. But he was wearing that crown, showing that this is real. And the thorn stuck in his head. And in the book of Revelation, like I said earlier, chapter 7, before God destroys mankind, you know, can I, can I teach you real quick before I finish, before I start preaching? Amen. Somebody say yes. yes. Before the world comes to an end, the church has to leave. 
So many people read the book of Revelation with fear. If you can read it, you shouldn't be afraid. Amen. Because you're not going to be here for that. Amen. But what happens is God says this. I'm going to read it so you don't think I'm making this up. Verse 1, Revelation 7, 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Saying, now watch this, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed. Somebody say sealed. sealed. Till we have sealed. What verse am I? Three. I was reading so fast. Till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there was sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now I want to read this one more time. This is how God is going to destroy mankind. We're not here at this time. Yes, it's important that you understand this. We're not here. Somebody say, I won't be here for that. Yes. See, it's very important that you recognize that we're not going to be here when God starts to pour out his wrath. I'll say it one more time. You're not going to be on the earth when God starts to pour out his wrath. Everything that's happening now is a result of sin. God's not doing that. Amen. That's sin trying its best to destroy people. Amen. So here we see God, because when God starts killing, yeah. he uses angels. Yeah. Yes. And so it says this, look, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help all of us. He said, don't hurt nothing till I have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were 144,000. Now, that's not a lot of people. Right. It must meant we wasn't there. Because I got 147,000 family members saved. <laughs> Come on. So all these religions are trying to be in this number. Go ahead, squeeze in. <laughs> But I'm sealed already yeah. with the first seal. Yeah. Now go to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 because what we're dealing with today in our society is, you know, especially around this time of year, is the resurrection of Jesus. And the proof of the resurrection of Jesus, and anybody want to know proof? Anybody say, I want to know the proof. The Holy Ghost. The tomb is empty. You ain't going to believe that. You couldn't care less about that. You know, because they'll say, you can probably say, well, you made up a tomb. But the proof of the resurrection of Jesus is the Holy Ghost, which every cult, every religion stays away from. Come on. No one wants to talk about the Holy Ghost. People want to mock him. They want to criticize him. And churches want to water him down. No, 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 don't speak in tongues. No, 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 don't, don't lay hands on the sick. No, 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 let them just die. God take if, God give if, God take if away. But when there's a Holy Ghost, he changes the situation for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 1 13 says this, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. See, the proof that Jesus was raised from the dead is given to them that believe. And what does he give you? The Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. Now, we're talking about seals, marks, things that can't be opened. When you get saved, he gives you the Holy Ghost, and that's your guarantee that you're going home. Amen. <laughs> now, I'm, you, know, you know, my wife, she's driving somewhere. If you do it, my daughter's in here somewhere. Cut her up in little pieces. Don't do it, don't. And do her DNA test. It'd be sealed that she belongs to me. 
and her mother. So when you dissect the real Christian, you're going to find the Holy Ghost in there. You're not going to find the Bible's definition. You're not going to find Webster definition of, of Christian in there. The, the dictionary definition of a Christian is one that follows the teachings of Christ. If that was the case, America would be saved. America loves to say we believe in our Judeo-Christian principles. But we'll kill any and everything that don't agree with us. Come on, help me. So when you're looking at the seal, the guarantee, you have to look at the resurrection from the standpoint of Jesus sent the Holy Ghost to prove that he's home. 